Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the PC21 build series. If you haven't checked up out part one already, it'll be linked below. A very quick recap, this model was 10 years old. It's been sitting around for about 10 years. It was part built when I picked it up. In, in the first part of the build series, we worked on the wing. <laughs> Don't mention the retracts. We still haven't got new retracts, but we worked on the wing. We checked it all over, put new servos in, put the retracts in. We took the retracts back out because there was an issue with them that we'll end up going to buy a new set of retracks, but we managed to get the wing joined together, which is great. That's all we got covered last time around. Um, this time we're going to get the wing fitted to the fuse large. So it's going to be dowelled, drilled out, and we'll go on to the tailplane section as well. So off the wing, now onto the fuse large. Let's make a start. <laughs> Okay, so let's refer back to the instructions. So now we've glued the wing, step 22. Step 23 is looks like it's about marking out the front for the dowels. We're gonna use two six mil dowels, 50 mil length, and we're getting glued in 100 mils apart. Is that 12 mil from the bottom? Mm, okay, have to look at that, six mil deep hole. Okay, we've got some working out to do there. Um, and then we'll go on to the fuse large. So let me get this, marked up first on the front of the wing and then I'll show you. Okay guys let me show you what, what I've done. I've put masking tape along the front edge of the wings to make it easier to mark. I've actually lined the top piece of the masking tape up with the top of the wing. Now this is quite difficult to do because actually there's a curve then it goes flat and I'm trying to get it on the flat edge there so I think that's about right. I then measured from the center uh, 50 mil out on each side which gives me my 100 mil gap then down on each line I've done the 12 mil. So that should be the dowel location for our wings on those cross crosses. Now on the fuse large, again, it was a little bit tricky. So it says basically from the from the a line here, which isn't really a line, it is a curve, which is why it's tricky. You need to measure up 12 mil to get the line. So I started off by working out what the center of the fuse large. Again, putting tape on, measured across the line, across the top as well, drew myself center line, so I could then come out. 50 mil each side, draw my vertical lines, and then try to work out on this crease where the line was to be able to come up 12 mil. I then offered the wing up and put the wing on top of the fuse large and just drew over the top of it. So I sort of check a bit of alignment off that line as well. And it looks about right. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about drilling these. Obviously you want them in the right place, but in the, the day, if they're a couple of millimeters out, we can open up the hole and then fill the other side of it. So we've still got a tight fit. So let's drill it and see how it works out. Here we go guys, you can see hopefully that I put the dowels in, six mil holes, I've left about 20, 25 mil out. I've just rounded the ends off very slightly to help them out. I've drilled in the two six mil holes in the front, although I've opened up them up to 6.5, just to help me out a little bit, and then let's see if it fits. And it does. Of course it does because I've already tried it. Let's get the back of the line. It goes down nice. So there we go. Didn't need to be worried about that at all. So just with a job like this, just case of measure, 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 and then do your drilling or your cutting. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the gap underneath. And there we go. I'm not going to spin the model over because it's on the stand and there's wings on and the workshop's a little bit small. But there we go, we can see the gap. That's pretty nice. We'll end up putting some, probably some wing tape inside here just to cushion it so it sits down. We'll get hold of some of that, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I think the next step, well I know the next step, is we now have to need to do the same with the back. We need to work out the middle of the fuselage. We can obviously see the middle of the wing here and make sure the wing is sitting square to the fuselage. In other words, it's not twisted in any way. So let's do that and then we can finally get the wing attached. So let me show you the step before we do it. It says, mount the wings to the fuselage with the screw. So the screws are six by 50 mil, fine. Um, so you're gonna use a 6.2 millimeter drill to drill through. And then we're gonna use a, a screw with blind nuts on the end. And we've got a reinforcement plate as well, which goes across the wing. But what it doesn't tell you is any type of measurement whatsoever. So I guess what we do, the reinforcement plate is here. It's already got two holes. 
stops on it, it's nicely covered. We can mark the centre of this, mark the work out the distance of the screws there. We can make sure the wings put the wing on the model to do the drilling, make sure it's central, and then we can get our distance that way. So it kind of makes sense in my head, probably hopefully it makes sense in yours. I'll go ahead and do it and we'll see what it looks like. Okay guys, so we've put this tape across the back of the fuselage here. I've measured the center of the width of the fuselage there, and I set where our mark is, and that's going directly on the center of the wing here. There's a small gap there, because actually the wing bends away very slightly there, it must have been squished by that corner. Um, anyway, I'm also gonna check just the distance here from the side of the fuselage to this part here. Side of the fuselage to that part there, this should be exactly the same. I mean, a bit over the top, Three and a half. Three and a half. Double check it. Three and a half. So that looks about about right. It's sitting down as well. I can see that it's sitting down. We're in on the front as well. Um, I've then done the same on this. Matter of fact, this already had a mark on it. So I had a centre mark on it. Again, this just uh, will go on the centre here. It's a little bit rocky, so I have to make sure I square up the wing. And then I'm going to mark the middle of these two holes and drill through. That is the plan. And that is what I'm going to do now. I might just draw around those actually without rocking this. And then work out the centre in a minute. That, in theory, should then be square. Hole one, hole two. So I'll just get the centre of these for the drill bit, put a pilot in there first, and then the main drill. And that's our wing bolt holes drilled. So I've just pushed them in there now. There's no nuts on the other side. I've not got the reinforcement plate in there. So I pull those off. The next job is to put the nuts the other side, the ones with the claws on there, line nuts and then it gives us something to screw into. So I'll do that now and then hopefully show you the wing all attached. So this is now the first fit of the wing. Let's push this through here. Now with those blind nuts, I've used a pair of pliers and some tissue to be really careful to squeeze them right into the holes so they can't come out. So what you don't want is to be putting this bolt in and have the blind nut come loose part way through. It just makes it really, really difficult. So let's try this out, see if this lines up. And these bolts can probably be trimmed down a little bit. Let's be honest with you, probably leave them long. And there might be a place where I've said nylon bolts. Let's do something a little bit stronger, I don't know. That's gone up nice, but this one seems to be a little bit tight at the moment. Just do it nice and tight. And then this one. And there we go. I am happy with that. The wing is now mounted for the very first time. And there we go, we can pick up the whole plane from the wing. And actually the weight's not feeling too bad at the moment. I know we've got it's missing at the moment, retracts, what have you, but yeah, I like that. It's nice, it's tidy. Great job. So the finishing touch for this wing now is to attach a belly pan to this section here, which they obviously supply as part of the kit. So we need to epoxy that on to the wing. Now we can't go too close to the fuselage because we need to be able to maneuver the wing out and the dowels out. So I'm gonna leave roughly the same gap of about a mil, mil and a half. Uh, get it in the middle by measuring again, just checking that we're in centre, then put some epoxy underneath it. So I'll draw around it as well, so now I'm epoxy on the inside of the line, and then we'll stick that on. And that really does transform the wing. Okay, so next up is really doing the rudder. Now the rudder on this model is already done, which is great for me, so I can just skip over all these steps. Lovely, which brings us on to the tail plane. So similar process as before by looks of it, we're gonna use a rib template to locate the two four mil holes we've got to draw and we've got to drill in either side of the fuselage. Um, and then we've got this mechanism to make up, which is what's gonna control the elevators off of a single servo, 
again that's hidden inside the fuselage and then we've got up here we're going to be doweling using the template again each side of the stabilizer and applying these four mil dowels into each side and then comes a tricky bit where we're going to be putting the holes inside the stabilizer themselves inside the elevator by looks of it so this is i'm going to get probably to this point where i've drilled it all got the dowels ready then i'm probably going to pause and just double check the instructions because the control surfaces on the elevators have already been hinged so before i cut them off to try and get this mechanism in place i want to make sure that's definitely what you need to do by the looks of it it is though so you can sort of see them going on in one piece here once stabilizers on that's when you offer up the control surfaces and that mechanism there which is shown in this diagram here i believe oh and these little tabs as well anyway i'll worry about step 38 in a minute let's get this other section done first and get these dowels glued in as well and then i'll let you know what i've decided okay guys so we have um, done a dry fit of this airplane so i've drawn out holes each side put pegs in the stabilizers on both sides and just on dry fit so no glue at the moment bringing it all together got a small gap here i just need to work on to get it a little bit tighter but it really has proven the point that this system here does need to sit inside um, each of the control surfaces so what i need to do now is just cut these hinges take off each of the control surfaces put this mechanism mechanism back inside do new hinge lines or hinge holes rather in both the stabilizer and the control surface the elevator on both sides then i should be able to offer this all up in one go and the mechanism should work simple as that five minute job guys quick update for your mid progress here we've glued on each half of the stabilizer i've cut off the elevators as you can see so there's just three hinges on each pretty easy to do come off nice and clean um, and then i fitted the rod so the nylon parts on the rod go into the stabilizer which keeps it in place on each side and then the next job is to drill out holes into the elevators to receive the rod and also rehinge it and that should do nicely so there's a mechanism there as you can see it's moving i'm pretty happy with that it's glued on pretty nice let's get these elevators back on the stabilizer and see what she looks like there we go guys the elevator is done and that was not a five minute job in the slightest that was a real pain for one reason or another just rehinging it get it lined up but no it's done now what we're going to do is i don't quite like the gap it's down the middle there so i'm going to get some covering and iron it into this gap to completely seal it so iron it up the control surface and the stabilizer they look a little bit tidier but plenty of movement and it's working from the joint in the middle which means that the servo can be connected but we've got to see what is next hey guys the next step is to install the rear servos um, but i'm going to skip over that because my new servos haven't arrived yet so what we're going to do is go on to step 43 which is to attach the rear cover and we do that by putting in some plyo plates and then eight screws around it so here we are here's the rear of the model these are the plyo plates that need to go in and there we go they're now in place to give us something to screw into so when doing these because it was pretty fiddly i used epoxy and also super glue at the same time so put epoxy on the back of the plate and then just dab a super glue to hold it in place while the epoxy is drying that works pretty well so now that those plates are in place in the eight different positions we should be able to attach this rear cover mark up where the plates are make sure we draw through on each of them and get that hold in place with uh, just eight small screws okay time we get the holes in the right place i've just used some masking tape down the side of the fuselage and drawn a couple of lines on there which correspond exactly to where the plate is on the other side and that way i know once the covers on i'm going to draw through the cover and in the plywood all in one go that it should be right so again next step i've used a lot of masking tape again to take this down to really squish it to the fuselage so I can then go ahead and get my holes drilled. But what I have just noticed though is at the back is you can probably just about see it, it's not formed quite right on one side, which is a little bit unfortunate. So what we'll have to do is we'll be able to put the screw in, have to put another block in the other side and just put it on here. 
but I'll do that after I've located all the other screws. And there we go, there we have the pilot holes. So I've obviously not drilled the right size at the moment, just pilot holes, because I want to take this back off to open up the holes on the cover. So the screw slots straight through the cover, but then actually taps into the wood insert behind. And there we go. The rear cover is now attached. Screws are in place. I will admit though, I made a mistake at the front. The very first screw, I drew, I drilled the pilot hole too small. And when I put the screw in, it actually snapped inside, which is the right pain. So now I have to take that back off and see if I can get that screw out. If not, I have to relocate that hole and put some filler in this one and touch it in. Um, I'll do that um, and I will also have a look at what is next as well. Okay, so the next step to really talk about putting the front retract in. A uh, number of steps to do that here and then once that's done you put the front servo in so you can steer. Um, however, we're still sourcing retracts at the moment. So having a few issues getting hold of replacement retract or retract set. Hopefully we'll have an update on that soon. And then it talks about putting the engine which of course we're not doing engine, we're doing electric motor. Motor's not arrived yet, ESC has, understand us, offs have as well. So we'll skip over that for a minute, so we can carry on progressing. Blah, blah, blah. Servo, fossil servo, we won't be doing that. That's running the closed loop down to the front retract, which we won't do until we put the retract in. So what can we do to conclude this part of the build? Um, skipping, skipping, not relevant. Ah, here we go. So there's a couple of trim pieces. So we can prepare these. Uh, so these trim pieces go towards the elevators. Let me find it quick. And here it is. So it's not been cut yet. So this is both halves together. It's gonna to be trimmed up and cut in half to make a left and a right. And it goes down the fuselage towards the stabilizer. So flick over model currently on its side. But yeah, so it end up going here. So come along, so like, act like a fairing and going round, kind of a bit like the rudder's got this big fairing going into it. This one's actually separate. So let's get this trimmed up and then we'll offer, offer it up to the model and see what it looks like. Okay, so now I've cut out these two side cheeks. So the next job is to attach them on. Now they clearly lip onto the tail section, which is great, stabilizer. And then there's a tiny mark at the front here, which you can just about see, which is where the front of it lines up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them roughly to where they need to be, well, exactly to where they need to be. Looks like it needs a little bit more trimming as well, what's gonna cover, yeah, that one's trimming slightly, I was gonna cover the white, and we don't want that. Um, so I'll do that as well. And then I'm gonna mask up the edges all the way around. Once masking tape's on there, I'll be able to run the epoxy fillet inside those, those two lines, and then get that epoxy on, then use more masking tape to hold it in place while it's drying. So let me do that now. So there we are, we've taped up where it should be. I've trimmed the top edge as well so it doesn't cover the white. And of course, applied the masking tape around it. So this should now give me an area to glue. So if I glue to the edge of the masking tape, I shouldn't get any glue on the actual pop fuse I was gonna see. And it should be enough to get it stuck, I guess. We just need to mask up the back as well, thinking about it. So we know where we're going to tail. So yeah, I'll mask that as well, get it glued on, and then I'll show you guys. And there she is, guys. And I'm pretty pleased with that. It worked pretty well. There's a little bit of residue on the masking tape to sort of pick off and clean up afterwards. But that is in place, exactly where I wanted it. So now it's just a case of getting on the other side. But doesn't that look much better? I really like it. Right, let's get the other one done. So guys, the next job is to trim the cowling. So the front of the cowling has all been trimmed, but we've got to trim out these side holes here so we can fit the exhausts. So let's have a look. So on the cowling, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's just a very faint indentation of where those holes are. Um, you can probably just see it. So what I'm gonna do is put some masking tape around that to give me a rough guide that I can just use my Dremel and take out the middle section there then pull the tape off and get it nice and round and then the exhaust actually get fitted from the inside so I have like this flange here so I get epoxy on it and they go inside the cowling and then come out um, let's have a go at cutting those holes out okay guys so the cowling it is 
cut out and see holes both sides. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. So the first time I just masked it up like I showed you, but on the second time I just got a, a sharpie and actually drew just around the inside of the circle and then cut it out that way, just easier and actually quicker. So the next job is to get the exhaust mounted in, like so. Make sure they're positioned in the middle and also make sure they're in line as well. So if we just line them up with these stripes that run down the fuselage, looks about right and this vent at the front. So we get those epoxied in and then that will be the cowling finished. So guys, I was just questioning myself there whether these should be lined up with the white line. So I thought best check it for I glue and I've attached the cowling back on and just to check that and it looks like I was actually wrong. So if we'd lined them up with line, they'd be the wrong angle. They kind of need to be there. So I'm gonna take some extra measurements to make sure that these are right. Obviously the model at the moment is facing very slightly downwards. Um, so yeah, just want to let you know that. I'm gonna double check, measure up and then glue them. And there we go guys, the exhaust pipes are on. Holes cut, pipes in, glue from the inside. I'm pretty pleased there. It was quite difficult to line them both up together. Um, but I think I've done a reasonable job there. Angle them very slightly down. Hard to see at the moment, obviously the model's on the stand, not on the floor, so it's not sitting true to the floor. But yeah, looks good. Okay guys, so now that we've done the hatch, the next job is to fit and trim, or trim and fit rather, the canopy. So I've just spent a bit of time just tidying up in here and just cleaning out all the dust that was there. Now the canopy needs to be trimmed, as you can see, front, back, sides, and what's gonna make it removable from point of view, we're gonna add pilots in here at a later date. So we're probably gonna just use screws, say we, I, around the sides, just a few, quite a long canopy, it's obviously a double cockpit. Um, around the front, the screws were, and on, on the back. So let me get this trimmed up and then just placed on top so we can see what it looks like for the first time. Before I go ahead and cut this out, I thought I'd just take a moment to show you a little sort of trick that's worked for me last time. So as you can see, I've applied masking tape to the line as to where I need to cut. And that's because the line is so faint, I find it difficult to see as I'm cutting. But if I edge the tape on the line, then it's much easier just to follow the tape along. Obviously you've got to be a little bit careful around the back where it curves, because the tape doesn't curve quite so well. But it really does help me when it comes to trimming things like this. It allows me to keep it a nice straight line and also on the right line as well. And there she is, the canopy is on for the very first time. Now it's not attached, it's just resting in place. I think that looks pretty good down that line. And on the back, just left a bit of tape there, I need to clear, take that off. But I'm happy with that. So next job is to really work out where we're gonna put the screws. And I wanna make sure that they're evenly spaced as well, otherwise it's gonna look really odd. So I'll probably put the back one in first and then the front one in and then measure the distance between and work out how many I want down there. I also want to find some screws that don't stand out, so probably some screws with uh, black heads on them. And there you go guys, there is the finished look with the screws. So I've used M2 screws, self tap in with M2 washers behind them. And that, again, that's just so we can remove the canopy at a later date. And look, I've not put all the screws down yet, I do need to remove the canopy and just have a clean up inside. There's a little bit of dust has crept inside and also make sure the canopy plastic is really clean before we put it back on. And finally as well, I don't want the canopy on while we're building the rest of the plane because we turn the plane upside down on the stand and don't want it getting squashed. But overall, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. Canopy looks absolutely great. The model right now, hope you agree, is also looking great. Hey guys, so I think it's a pretty good time to stop part two of this build series. We've got quite a lot done. Um, let's have a quick recap, if I can even remember. So we finished off fitting the tailplane, the elevators and the side triangle bit things, whatever they're, they're called, but it goes out towards the stabilizer. Um, we've spent a lot of time doing the canopy. We've had a look at the front hatch as well. And of course we've put the pipes on, the exhaust pipes on the cowling. So that's quite a lot. So next time around in part three, I think it'd be time to get onto the motor. So swapping out the current motor is in there for the X-Power 40. We've got the Castle 160 ESC here as well now and the standoff, so we're completely good to go for that. We're running a UBEC system in there and probably putting the receiver in and swapping out the last couple of servos as well. So we've not changed the servos yet for the rudder or the elevator. So we're getting really close. So I do think next time around, video number three, 
we'll be able to finish this model off. So, oh, don't forget we've also got to put the retracts back in because we still haven't got a new set. But hopefully they'll arrive soon, we'll sort that out. So guys, it's 10 p.m. here, I'm absolutely done for the day. Please subscribe and follow, hit the notification bell, put some comments below as well if you've got any questions on this particular build. I'm really enjoying it, hopefully you are too. I'll see you next time around.